alignments. Let's do a quick comparison and contrast against using LAN Desktop for creating alignments as well as Civil 3D for creating alignments. So to begin, we'll start with LAN Desktop and we'll create a new drawing. We'll call this Alignment Data and create project. This will be project A for alignments and we'll grab a template file. 1 inch equals 50, finish, OK, new project, new point database, and I'm in. Well, if I'm going to construct an alignment for a roadway, the first thing I have to do is I have to have some geometry to work with for the alignment, because if we look from the drop-down list, I've only got a couple different ways of doing it, define from objects or define from polyline. All right, there's also another way that we can do it in the editor, which is even more cumbersome because it's all dialog box driven. So let's create some, some line work. So I'm going to draw a line. We'll go in this direction, we'll say 500 feet. Let's back up a little bit. Let's draw another line from the, let's bring up a draw menu here. We're going to draw another line from the end of this guy. We're going to go down in this direction 500 feet and we'll come back, back ourselves up again. Draw one more line. So line from the end of here 500. All right, we've got our alignment. Now maybe I want to make sure that I maintain some horizontal curves. So we do have some tools in here that we can do lines and curves. I'm going to do a curve between two lines. First tangent, second tangent. We'll say the radius is going to be 200. And it does it for us. First tangent, second tangent, and radius is 200. All right, so we do have some tools to construct the geometry with which to define our roadway or our center line or channel or whatever this is going to be. But the issue that we run into is a couple things. I mean, while that looks correct, you know, what if uh, somebody came in and grip edited this line? I mean, they wouldn't, wouldn't have to move it much, and now it's geometri geometrically incorrect, and there's nothing that we can do about it. So, I mean, we'd, we'd have to know that it's off, and we may not find that out until it's pretty late in the process. Uh, Land Desktop is a kind of like a one-way street. You start with the alignment, you start working your way out from there, you find out later there's a problem with the alignment, that means your profile needs to be done, your redone, your proposed profile, and it just creates a, a chain reaction of, of nastiness. So we'll, um, we'll put it back to where it's geometrically correct, and maybe what we'll do is we'll use a polyline here, so I'm going to bring up my modify menu, and let's go ahead and P edit, that's right, that is in the modify to menu. We'll go ahead and edit polyline, select the segment. Do I want to turn it into one? We'll say yes. Join, I'm going to join all of these objects and that will make up, oops, we won't close it, we'll leave it open. All right. So there is my polyline that will make up my alignment. So I'm going to come down. So I've, I've, I'm up, left up to my own devices for the geometry, essentially. Now I'm going to come down. We'll define it from polyline. We'll take and select the, the polyline. A red X appears, basically based on the direction that the line where the polyline was drawn. So in some cases, it should be 50-50. It's going to be in the right spot. But let's say we wanted the stationing to go the other way. Unfortunately, there's no way to reverse that without a lisp routine or something else. But in this case, select reference point, enter for start, alignment name. You know, we have to be kind of generic on some of these because there's no easy way to rename an alignment. Let's say description, this is going to be Main Street. And let's say the starting station is going to be uh, 10 plus 0, 0. So my alignment's created and I'm done. Well, if the designer or engineer comes back and decides that, you know what, a 200 foot radius isn't going to work with this guy, we need to change it or we need to start editing it, our ability to edit it is going to be significantly limited. You know, there are some things that we can do if you want to come in and, and start battling with the the text editor version of what we have here, you can certainly give that a stab, but 
AutoCAD's a graphical tool, which is our engine, it'd be much easier to be able to grip at it and start dragging some of these things around. So first, to create the geometry and ensure that it's accurate is difficult. All right, we're, we're left up to our own devices, and I'm sure like everybody else, some days for me, 2 plus 2 unfortunately equals 5. So it would be helpful if the software would, would take better uh, care of me as it relates to creating accurate geometry. I can't reverse the alignment once it's created. If I decide that I want to move it somewhere, you know, I, I need to move the alignment, you know, 5 foot over or something to that effect, I've basically got to erase it and recreate it again. I can't rename it. There's just... You know, it's a powerful tool. We've used it for years. If we're comfortable with it, you know, we're, we're able to uh, be productive and, and do a lot of fantastic work. But there are a lot of challenges and pain points in that that we need to be able to overcome to be successful with it. So let's do this. Let's take a look at a similar task in Land Desktop. I'm sorry, in Civil 3D. We'll flip back to Civil. Now the first thing that I'm going to do here is, you know what, let's, um, let's create an alignment. So we're going to go into Home. We'll come down to Alignment here because that's Home is Create. Uh, I'm going to go into the Alignment Creation Tools and I'm going to give the alignment a name. Now what's fantastic about this is I can rename it at will. So we'll call it uh, Main Street. Now because we're using this as a tool to supplement land, maybe a generic name is going to be better because ultimately that's what's going to go back into land desktop. But ultimately, once you've made the transition to Civil 3D, we can we can rename in that at will. Starting station, we'll say uh, 10 plus 0, 0, and let's actually make this Main Street Civil 3D. Alignment style proposed controls how it's displayed. Would we like to see labels? All the stationing is going to happen for us automatically, so let's do major, minor, and geometry points. We'll say OK and it brings up a dialog box. Special tools to ensure geometry is accurate. I'm going to come down my limit on my curves was I wanted a default radius of 200 feet. I'm already ready to go with that. I can even select the mathematical process that it will use to generate the curve. In this case we'll just go with a default clothoid, but you also have uh, BLOSS and biquadratic and sinusoidal curves, All right, depending on the types of projects you're working on. We'll create tangent, tangent with curves. I'm going to pick a point here. We'll come off in this direction 500 feet. I will uh, zoom up and take a look at that. You'll notice as I draw, it's automatically adding the curves for me. So we'll come down in this direction 500 feet like we did before. And I'm just kind of freehanding this in just to see what it does. 500, just maintaining a similar process to what we did before. So you'll notice now the alignment that I created. I've got an alignment. It's already labeled. I, I know where I'm at along the alignment. Should you decide you want to make a change, I can grip the alignment and as I start making changes to it you'll notice that the geometry automatically updates maintaining my tangencies. I can even grab points in here, start shifting it side to side. I can even come in, move the entire alignment from here to here and everything remains updated. All right, very, very, very powerful tool. Now there are other things that we can get into in here that we can create special curves. We can do a best fit curve based on field data. You can start getting into uh, different types of spirals, you know, for uh, transportation related projects, and, and all of it remains dynamic. So once again, I can start in this environment. I can start laying out a lot of geometry, doing a lot of what if scenarios, and I'm I'm able to go from there. Now let's say that. Um, the alignment that I constructed, I'm happy with it, but uh, I want to reverse the direction. All right, Unlike Land Desktop where it was a problem, here I can take and select the uh, alignment itself. We're going to come up using my contextual menus. That also shows me the name of the object I've selected. I'm going to come down under Modify and I can say Reverse Direction. So we'll say Reverse Direction. It's going to warn me that if I do that, if there's any station equations, those will be lost. That's fine. I don't have any. We'll say OK, and my, my stations are automatically updated. OK, once again, Undo is your friend. I can say Undo, and it will back me up to where, see that is 2385. Let's take an Undo, and my alignment direction reverses again. All right. So a lot of the very painful stuff that, that we had to deal with in land completely goes away in this environment.
So I've got this one main civil. Let's do this. In addition to building data here and then pushing it back to LAN desktop, if I've got some data already created in LAN desktop, I can migrate some of it in here and continue to work on it. So let's give this a stab. We're going to do insert from LAN desktop. I'm going to navigate out to my project A and we will bring in our alignment geometry for the road one that we created. We'll say OK. So my alignment has been migrated. It's in. Now it's, who knows? Well, turns out it's not that far away. But uh, let's say that it was, you know, half a planet away because of the coordinate system. You could always come over to the side here because we're dealing with objects. We can grab alignments navigate to road 1 simply by right clicking and say zoom 2 it immediately takes us to that alignment that was created in uh, in LAN desktop. Let's go ahead select Main Street, we'll say zoom 2 and it takes us to the one we created in Civil. So backing that up we've got our uh, alignment here that was created from land. Let's say we wanted to move it or let's uh, rotate it. Let's rotate the alignment just so that we can see the uh, effects of the change. So I'm going to rotate it so that it's almost vertical. And let's reverse the direction. So we'll come down. That is uh, reversed. Alright, so we've made some changes to our alignment. I'm happy with that. I'd like to now take my old alignment and my new one. Let's migrate that back to LAN Desktop. So we're going to go ahead using XML like we looked at before. So we'll go ahead under alignments here, we'll say export to land XML. We don't have profiles for those yet, so we will just export the, uh, well, we'll uh, export the geometry. Looks like it wants to take them both, so we'll go ahead and let it take it. We'll say OK to land XML 1.1. Put that on my desktop. We'll call it alignments. Save that, and they're out. So, First, before we go back to land, Civil 3D, I can create the geometry more accurately. It's going to maintain the accuracy. You know, we didn't even get into criteria based design. And what criteria based design does for us is we can actually tell it we want to maintain arcs at a particular length and a, spe you know, special, a uh, specific distance between tangents. There's, there's a lot of different ways, you know, a lot of other powerful, accurate. Uh, geometry tools that we can use. In addition, we can reverse the alignment. We can It's automatically going to add stationing. stationing. It's a lot more flexible. You know, uh, complex geometry is supported. A lot of powerful things that we can do and I'm sure you can see we can do it much faster here. Now that I've exported it to XML, let's flip back to LAN Desktop. We see the one that is here already. So I'm going to uh, regen and then I'm going to back myself up here a little bit. Let's go ahead and bring that geometry in. Actually the new one should show up on the side here. So what we're going to do under projects import land XML. My dialog is still misbehaving but that's okay. We'll come out to my desktop. I'm going to grab alignments.xml We'll go ahead and open that. The system tells us there's two alignments. That's fine. One we created from scratch, one we migrated from land. It says uh, one of them is new. Uh, two of them are available for import. So we'll say OK. And we'll go ahead and we're going to import if there is a conflict, which there will be. I'm going to tell it to overwrite the one that I had. So in essence, I've taken the alignment from land into civil, made changes to it, and I'm going to bring it back so I can use Civil 3D both as a tool to uh, edit my alignment within LAN desktop as well as create new ones and then migrate those in. So we'll go ahead and import them. LAN uh, XML import has been uh, constructed. You see the new alignment. You see my old geometry here on the screen that we can erase. And just to be sure that this worked, I'm going to erase these both off the screen. Come down to alignments. We'll say import which one do we want to import? There's road one we had before, that's fine. Road one now shows the definition we had before. If we do alignments, we'll do import, we'll do Main Street Civil 3D, and we see the other one imports off to the side. If we look at uh, this, let's add some stationing to make sure that it's reversed. We should see that zero is on the top. 
So we're going to set a current alignment, which is another thing we don't have to deal with in Civil 3D. I'm going to go ahead and we'll create station labels. So beginning station 10 plus 0, 0, end at the end. Delete existing station layers, yes. Once again, very layer uh, dependent. Uh, delete existing station layers, yes. And if we look, we can see 10 plus 0, 0 is at the top. So, I mean, even just displaying the, the numbers it takes us longer in LAN desktop. We can come back um, looking at Civil 3D. This all remains dynamic. So we change the scale, 20 scale, 50 scale. Once again, if we're using it as a tool to migrate back to land, it doesn't help us in the land desktop arena, but it certainly helps us here as we're actually creating it. So um, to recap, we've covered a number of different things to show how Civil 3D can be used as a tool to create and edit alignments that we can then supplement our land desktop or our existing land desktop workflow.